Steve Alcorn's a fine investigator. Oh, fuck off. This is the Bordian Slip with your host, Chris York. I don't... I don't need porn, Chris. I have a good woman. Listen, I have a I well. have a good woman. I still watch porn. Co-host, Steve Alcorn. You are the top shit in Bigfootery, if you get the invitation. Oh, are you? I've gotten the invitation two years in a row now, Chris. Wow, not me. And sometimes special guest, Matt Knapp. It's hard growing older, you know? Maturing, maturing. Uh, uh, uh-huh. Getting more <laughs> dignified and stuff. <laughs> okay, George Washington. <laughs> I opted for the. Uh, Is that what meth addicts say? <laughs> that make me more dignified. <laughs> Taking on all things strange since 2013. Wait a minute. I don't know what the hell. Are we're you doing. saying that he's pregnant? Possibly. Was he implanted by? One of these teenage aliens. <laughs> Didn't that happen to Arnold? Uh, this di- device, which comes as part of Nintendo's quality of life initiative, is to is going to have kids running around banging, banging their heads off bricks. <laughs> yeah. You're about to witness the strength of creep knowledge. <laughs> Hiya, folks, and welcome to the 40 and Slip, episode 89. Uh, I don't know what this episode should be titled. This is a steaming pile of shit that we give to you weekly, generally, if, you know, someone hits a fucking record button, i.e. me. Steve, are you there? Yes, sir. Are, are you there? Yes, you keep sir. you keep muting. I I had to clear my throat. Oh. And I know how professional this show is, so I didn't want to do it on air. Oh. Okay. And joining us this week, Mr. Matt Knapp. What's up, bitches? <laughs> it's a celebration. It's a celebration, bitches. Yes, episode 89, the I didn't come prepared episode. <laughs> you could have uh, just stopped it. You could have stopped it. I didn't come. That would have been funnier. Uh, uh, it, it, for uh, you. Yes, it would have been. For you, for, for your little third grade mentality, Steve. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really have an I. Well, I've had, we have some ideas on the table, but I didn't look at anything that I really wanted to go over for this week because of just shit going on and fuck it give me a give me a weekend of just a fuck it show so what's been going on nothing wow that's (laughs) good it's exciting the 40 and slip we practice the pull out method (laughs) (laughs) oh man i could tell you but that would hope open a whole portal worth of uh shit Oh, um, are we talking? Hey, I'm down. Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh God. <sighs> I just decided to start referring to it as the portal potty. The incident. good, the good doctor. Because it's all no. full of shit. I coined the phrase "portal potty," Matt. <sighs> Did you trademark it? Not yet. Are you gonna be like fucking the Gene Simmons and fucking Portal Gate? And, like, sue everybody that uses that? That would be a good idea. It would be. Hmm. It's, like, the only person I can sue so far is Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what is the new news out of Soha? Soha. Come, come, Soha. come to Soha. I, well, I expect, I, like, if I went to Total Recall, the play, the recall... To get, you know, a memory implant, they'd be like, would you like to take a trip or to have taken a trip to Soa? Go to beautiful Soa. I can actually tell you the exact 
goings on around the uh, Soha thing right now. Dr. Matthew Johnson, doctor. Yes, he is a doctor. <laughs> a doctor of what? I don't care. Anyway, he's he's opening a GoFundMe account now, so he can get thermal cameras. To um, because that way, film what exactly? <laughs> uh, light sources and unidentifiable blobs in the shape of somebody in a costume. I can read exactly if I can find it again. <laughs> Because, you know, oh, I'm in the wrong group. That's why I can't find it. <laughs> oh, Steve. oh, God. See, I came unprepared for today's show. I didn't even know we were. T oh, here, here is uh, Matthew Johnson's exact words. In light of the significant increasing Bigfoot, Bigfoot slash forest people activity on the perimeter of the base camp in the southern Oregon habituation era, area, Soha, for so sure. And, and the recent discovery of the portal during the past year, if I started a GoFundMe campaign to raise money to purchase a high-end thermal imaging video camera, would you be interested in contributing so I can eventually provide you and others with quality nighttime videos? So hey, I love you. You're an awesome, handsome, good squatcher. You're like number one in the world. So a guy in his group named Randy Ray would ask Randy Ray. Randy Ray, uh, would you be concerned about breaking their trust? And I, I assume this is how Matthew Johnson would have replied, and he did. <laughs> and and, and wait a minute, wait, you're referring to breaking the trust of the forest people. Uh, either that or the portal guardians, I'm not sure. Or the spaghetti monster. He says... What about Cthulhu? Uh, Matthew Johnson says... Randy Ray, I believe that our trust has grown enough over the past five years that I'm going to be safe, proceeding slowly but surely while asking their permission. <laughs> Daddy Squatch did not have any issues with us exploring the portal area during this. This sounds trip. like how I talked a girl into ass sex once. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's too funny. I'm sorry. There so they trust him enough for a thermal camera, but not an actual video camera. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to spend the next series of month just trying to introduce the idea, you know, a little bit at a time. <laughs> I'm just going to oh. put it in a little bit at first. <laughs> 13 people have already said that they would definitely. Uh, of course. Of definitely, course. Uh, go, go for the GoFundMe campaign. 12 people have already said that they have to check with their spouse first, but yes, they would be interested. I have to give props to two people who said no, no, <laughs> Gary Boyce and Keith Cook Carlson Ross. Those two, those two said no, 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 like no, no. Yes. So uh, uh, meatloaf and who? Uh, Keith. Oh, meatloaf, Keith. Yeah. <laughs> I like Keith. He's a, he's a cool dude. Ah. Uh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. So been, I don't know him very well, so I don't. I mean, I've hung out with him a few times in hangouts in the past. It's been a long time, but he's he was one of my very first subscribers on my YouTube channel. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, so now we've got Matt. That makes him a hell of a guy, a good fella. I've got a big butt that lives in my backyard, and if anybody would like to contribute money to me to purchase a web camera uh, to point into my backyard. That would be awesome. Aren't you concerned, Matt, that that might break the trust of the Bigfoot? Well, no, because see, I, I, I actually <laughs> rescued the uh, backyard person uh, from a wildfire. Oh, well, then... And so we have a really solid bond. You have trust? A circle of yes. trust, if you will? Yes. He is He is within the circle of trust. So your Bigfoot is Steve, not a Steve, don't break person. the circle of trust. His Bigfoot is not a forest person. It's a backyard person. Right. It lives in my backyard, so... 
And the, he there needs is a no camera, Steve. I need a camera. And I don't want, like, okay, whenever I say web camera, I don't mean, like, you know, crappy ones that sit on top of your monitor. I mean, like, porn site quality web camera. So, like, uh, Matthew Johnson wants a high-end thermal. You want a high-end webcam. Right. Matt, can we put a green screen on this tab? Sure. Okay. I mean, I can, I can use that to... Uh, Audio equipment. You know, project the image of a forest to make the Bigfoot feel more at home in the videos. Ah, there you go. How did this... Or, or backyard up, person. Backyard person. <laughs> How did the backyard person end up being in your particular backyard? I, I relocated them after I saved them from the wildfire, oh, Steve. That is right. I I didn't get that part. So is it happy in the backyard? I mean, of course. There's no forest there. Do you leave, you know, gifting bowls for it and shit? Oh, peanut butter. That's what they eat, isn't it? Only Cheetos. Only, only when they come out of the portal, because you know, portal travel makes them hungry and shit. So that's what I'm saying. Whenever yeah. I portal travel, I get like a little sick. I have to take some Dramamine. Maybe uh, Johnson should put some Dramamine in the gifting bowls and see what happens then. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we start making suggestions for what Johnson Listen, do. I've watched Stargate, Matt. That's a fucking hell of a trip. You can't tell me you wouldn't need some Dramamine for that bitch. Um, uh, the Bigfoot's physiology is adapted to portal lifestyles. Oh. Ah. Or backyard Same. person. Or backyard person. You know, pretty common knowledge. We don't want to stereotype, Matt. No. <clears throat> I, I saw the other day a where uh, show. somebody posted that... Uh, in the Bigfoot community, we shouldn't uh, use assumptions to further our research, which, you know, would normally be true, but that's all we have is assumptions. Um, and that's probably why we haven't accomplished anything. But I'm going to go ahead and use an assumption to further my own research and assume that Dr. Johnson's full of shit <laughs> about everything he claims. I think that's a pretty good assumption. I'm going to uh, assume that Magic Johnson believes he's a wizard. <laughs> I'm going to assume that this the is... position? Yes. Uh, this is going to shock. Thank some you, people. sir. May I have another? I'm going to assume that Matthew Johnson actually saw something back. What was it, 2000, when he first claimed to see a Bigfoot or whatever? Yeah. I'm going to assume that he actually saw something that day, because there is no fucking way in hell that this guy one day just decided, okay, I'm going to start believing in Bigfoot. So he saw something that day. Was it a Bigfoot? Who the fuck knows and who cares? But whatever it was, I fucking seems to have like really affected this guy. I mean, in a bad way, not in a good way either. So I think he saw something back in 2000 that he believed to be a Bigfoot. Good but, old, you know, he may be uh, telling the absolute truth about everything. No, no, I don't think so. Well, he could be. I think I, I, I'm out. willing to say that there is a chance, regardless of what I believe, that he could be telling the truth. But I have an endless list of reasons that I don't believe him. Well, geez, who doesn't? I mean, the guy's <laughs> you refuse. Can do I mean, magic. Be, be do, careful, do, do, Steve. Do. You don't want to end up on that uh, class action lawsuit. Well, I haven't gone. You no, have in fact, everything that I you have never, desire. I have never gone after anybody's profession because that is separate from Bigfoot shit. And I don't believe that you should. I mean, he might be the. In fact, I've read reviews from other psychologists and people who have bought his book, and there were all 90% were happy with, you know, his way of doing things. Great. 
but that's separate from his fucked up Bigfoot shit, you know? So if I'm going to go after Dr. Johnson, I'm not going to go after him professionally because that's just stupid. He's never treated me and he damn sure ain't going to treat my kid. So you wouldn't sit down for a session with old Dr. J. I might actually sit down for a session with Dr. J, but it sure wouldn't be <laughs> because of my mental health. I wonder you if old man titties can dunk the ball. Uh, Probably so. He's pretty I'd tall like dude. To find, yes. I'd like to find some old video of when he was playing ball and see see whether or not he could dunk or not. I, wanna, I, cool. I just want to know. Very, very That's my challenge. Ask. That's my challenge to Magic Johnson. A dunk contest? I, no, no, I don't want to have a dunk contest with him. I want him to do a video of him dunking a basketball. I want to see man titties run <laughs> down the court without a trampoline. Through the portal. Yes. Off the backboard. Nothing but net. <laughs> Nothing but net. I love how he always brings up, I played against Michael Jordan and all these... <laughs> Who the fuck cares? They went on. I mean, Michael Jordan sells underwear for a fucking Wait, when, when? I haven't heard this. You didn't know this? I, look at any of his fucking, his website. He, he talks about all these people he played basketball against, you know, when he was in college. Patrick Ewing, I believe. Michael Jordan. Quite a few of the big names back then. Oh, okay. He was the man. Who did he play ball for? Uh, Alaska, some Alaskan school. I didn't know Alaska played North Carolina Tar Heels in basketball. Yeah, uh, let me look it up. I, I had it the other day, and I, I checked. He is an a actual alum of the school, and he uh, did, in fact, play basketball for them. Well, and, I believe it. I just don't think right. that Alaska is real high up there on accreditation for anything. I'm just saying that's what he claims. He played Put it in the these. basket, Chief. <laughs> Nothing like that basketball team out there in Alaska. <laughs> Said nobody ever. <laughs> I I think mine was. More, I'm sure there's. I, I think mine really. was more point on point as to where the basketball team was. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I medication. played against. Uh, <laughs> I played against um, Michael Jordan too. Come you see that, Dr. Johnson. Remember that video game Larry Bird versus Michael Jordan? <laughs> Who doesn't? Oh, that was a great game, man. I, University I, I, of Alaska. That's where he went. University of Alaska <laughs> was where he went. <laughs> that Alaska it took you that long to look up University of Alaska. Yes, yes and, I, and I'll give you the list. I'll give you the list of yeah, people. You he's start giving me that list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as soon as I find it. Michael uh, Jordan. Here is, he's six foot nine, by the way. He's played against Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing, Clyde Drexler, Hakeem Olajuwon, Spud Webb, and other noteworthy opponents. <laughs> uh, that is according to family-rules.com, which is the website for uh, positive parenting with a plan by Dr. Matthew A. Johnson. I am Dr. Matthew Johnson, father to a murdered son. <laughs> Damn dirty apes. I, I'm uh, seriously though. I I really think he did see one, and not maybe not a Bigfoot, but something that he believed to be a Bigfoot. Because when he first started, and he first, I mean, he's always been an asshole. If you go back and look, I found a forum from way back then when he first started his research and shit. He's always been an asshole, but he believed that Bigfoot was flesh and blood originally, and he would fight like crazy. <laughs> against people who believed the, you know, they went to portals and, you know, were paranormal or anything. And, you know, he even issued a challenge to people, you know, prove any animal that's paranormal, you can't do it. Well, I've issued the same challenge back to Dr. Johnson in his exact words, and so far I haven't heard anything. Hmm. So, 
September 16th, and it is now the 20th. I told him it was okay because I issued it in a group because I'm not a member of Team Squatching USA, which is his Facebook group. Not that I can't see what's going on there. But I, I said that he could respond in his own group, and if he's listening tonight, the offer's still there. Uh, I know he can see it in this Bigfoot hoaxers group that I'm in. So, Dr. Johnson, show me one other animal that's paranormal, and then I'll believe you. That's it. Why, oh, Steve? They are. They're, they're they forest eat. people. If if they they're eat. interdimensional travelers that have no use for tools or clothing or fire, and but, they like to hang out in our woods and eat peanut food butter. that he leaves in a fucking food bowl for pets. Okay, listen. If it eats, if it shits, it's it's flesh and blood. It has. To, if it eats, it has to shit. Right. It's eating <laughs> peanut butter. I mean, as far as I know of, Steve. Right. So, I know I it do. eats and shits, it's flesh and blood. Period. You can't get past that. Am I the only one that thinks God kind of fucked up on that design? Um, <laughs> In this know. company? Probably so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my My whole thing is beside it being complete and total bullshit is I don't know anybody that would make this discovery and decide that it was best just left in the confines of his following in the Bigfoot community and not globally noteworthy uh, you know maybe inform the rest of the world that hey I can open up portals to travel to another dimension if anybody's interested. <laughs> but uh, he's he doesn't need you to believe, Matt. He doesn't need the world to believe. He knows. But he's not telling the world. He's only telling the Bigfoot community. Oh, I believe eventually he'll tell the world. I don't think so, because then it would be exposed that he's lying. No, no, because uh, I shared a link with Chris last night. Are, are you familiar with Dr. Stephen Greer? Matt? Yes. Okay. Pretty much the same fucking bullshit, except it's the UFO stuff. Same shit. But that guy started out kind of small, too. But Stephen Greer's not going around saying, I can make a UFO appear. Uh, maybe I'll have to send you that link. <laughs> <laughs> He's claiming a whole bunch of weird bullshit. Oh, and by the way, he says the French government is about to open up and expose that there are UFOs. And disclosure is nigh. Okay. But, in all fairness, UFOs, totally freaking plausible. Surely we're not the only planet with intelligent life in the freaking universe. I mean, it, to me, it's like totally possible. Yes. I, uh, I, where I, you start I, talking about they've already like infiltrated our planet and they're living in disguise, that's where I start having problems. But uh, a, a creature that has the same physical attributes described as every other organism, mammal, primate on this planet, running around naked, not using fire, not, not ever seen with any sort of technology, has the ability to use interdimensional portals. That's far-fetched to me. They do it with their mind. Right. But where I'm going with the analogy to, to Dr. Greer is all he really what he's interested in is making money. And, and I think eventually that's where Dr. Johnson's going. Obviously, he's starting the um, GoFundMe campaign now. And do you think he's really going to use all that money to buy a thermal camera if he makes that money? No. Uh, I'm I sure won't he tell thinks him. he'll earn more than what he's asking. Right. So, uh, Dr. Greer charges like 50 bucks just to watch his fucking presentations on the, on the internet, 50, like 50 bucks. And if you're there, it's a little cheaper if you go, I think, but, or no, it's a little more expensive if you actually go to the thing. But I think that's where it's going to go. I think that's what he has in mind. Buy the ticket, so when take you, the ride, Steve. Well, when you start out, okay, Bigfoot is flesh and blood. Yeah, everybody says that shit. But now you start saying that you can open portals and, you know, maybe they come from another dimension or another planet or another world or, you know. I, I think it's just a monster that's grown. 
I think the whole thing probably started with, um, I think Sir Richard Allen is uh, correct. I, I think uh, Matthew Johnson could possibly be a narcissist. I think so, too. And whenever he saw what he believed to be a, a Bigfoot creature, um, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he saw one. And so he really starts looking into it and really starts researching this. And he thinks himself to be such a brilliant man. And then he doesn't accomplish anything. I think that was impossible for him to swallow. So he did what many other people out there in the Bigfoot world do and came up with excuses as to why they sucked at looking for evidence and could never find anything. Here's the thing, though. With Dr. Johnson, uh, he started out as a flesh-and-blood type researcher, you know, trail cams, all this bullshit. And now he says, you know, I spent, what, what, what is it, nine years doing it this way, and now it didn't work, so I'm doing it, you know, paparazzi. I think he uses the term paparazzi. But if you go back on the Internet archives and look at his websites from back then, he had the same, except for the portals and the woo <laughs> Mr. Bigfoot, Mr. Bigfoot! <laughs> <laughs> except for the portals and the woo bullshit, he was already baiting. Uh, they called it baiting back then, not gifting. Uh, he had the foot tracks just like he does now. The, you know, he had exactly the same fucking evidence and they had exactly the same amount of Bigfoot showing up every time they went out. So it's not like anything's changed except his theory on what's going on. But, okay, Steve. What is his theory? You've been around the Bigfoot community for a while. A while, yes. A while. A while. Both of us have. Chris, I'm not trying to exclude you in this conversation. I suck, gentlemen. I, I'm just saying, Steve remembers whenever this whole thing, the, the whole paranormal, quote-unquote, woo, wasn't popular. It, it was a very, a very small group of people that thought that way. It wasn't all that long ago. So what's caused it to be like the mainstream way of thinking now? I mean, even even Les Stroud has jumped on the bandwagon. I was part of a, a Bigfoot group, and I'm not gonna you know, on Facebook, and I'm not gonna mention the name of the group because I left the group a long time ago, and they were like one of the better groups out there, and they had like fifteen thousand members or some bullshit like that, and it was always a great place to go to to talk about, you know, evidence and shit like that. And then, and I'm not joking, over fucking night, that group turned into a woo group, you know, a, a paranormal Bigfoot group. I mean, over fucking night. And I'm like, what the fuck? Woo woo. I mean, is it just like a chicka, psychological chicka, 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 trend or, I mean, where is it headed? I don't know. I, I, I think it's the lack of evidence. I mean, obviously, we've had a lack of evidence for 50 fucking years. We've been doing this, you know, there's been people out there since the Patterson-Gimlin film, and even before that, researching this phenomena. And what do we have to show for it? One good video, in my opinion. Now, there's a couple that might be good. One good video and a bunch of circumstantial evidence. That's it. And so if you, you've you done this for 50 years or more, something's got to break. And I think we're just at that point where people have just lost it and said, okay, we're going to have to believe this because we ain't coming up with anything here. And I, it happens to a lot of Bigfooters over time. Most of them start out, you know, I think on our side of the fence. Look, look at fucking Merchant. He started out as a skeptic, and now he's fucking all in on this bullshit. I, now, with him, I think it's a little bit, you know, okay, this is the popular thing, so I'm going with it. But whatever. I mean, how do you tr change from a scientific-minded skeptic to a paranormal-believing asshole? I don't know. Well, I mean... That's a bold <coughs> statement, Steve. Yeah, almost as bold as I hope he chokes on a cock and dies. Um, that's a little, but, that's a little better. Yeah, but I've been out there, and 
you know, I've had. Some would say it was enjoyable, a man. <laughs> Some might say, but I've had video cameras. I've had 35 millimeter cameras, digital cameras. There's no way I could have gotten a picture of one. There's just no way. I mean, that's ultimately where my field research led me was if I want to accomplish anything, it would be somebody would have to pay all my bills at home and fund my research. I don't have, I don't have the means to accomplish more than what I'm doing now, which is nothing, just a glimpse here and there, finding some tracks. Tracks don't do any good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's circumstantial at best. I mean, right. You can't prove what made that track unless. And then the people that do have the money that have the, you know, the thermal cameras and the high end video equipment and all that don't know what they're doing. They're idiots. I don't care how popular they are. I don't care how large their following is. I've talked to a lot of them. Haven't found one yet that knew anything as to what they are doing. You have to be able to go to an area and actually find the thing before you can take its picture. Not just well, run around blindly because you think you're right about something. Even those who may kind of sort of know what they're doing consider this just a hobby. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? You know, you don't have anybody out there. And those that are doing it. Uh, almost on a professional level and have all the spotlight still claim it's just a hobby. So who knows? That's, that's what I'm talking about. And so how, I mean, if, if Dr. Johnson or anybody who claims to be a habituator was, was doing it the right way, they would do it. Like, I mean, they always throw the name Jane Goodall around, but they're not doing it the way she did it. No. They're not but even close. She, she immersed herself in the environment for years. And not, was totally funded. Like <laughs> that's the difference. Not two week weekends a month with gifting bowls. No. And you know they're uh, weekend fucking warriors. That's all. Wally Hersom and any other benefactor, I will dare say, has never funded research of anybody that knew what the fuck they were doing. And, and let me say this: I don't know that Wally listens to our show. I'm guessing he doesn't. <laughs> stop <hope> giving <laughs> money to fucking bigfooters. Just stop. It's not going anywhere. They're wasting your fucking money. Yeah. God. Anybody can blow smoke up his ass. That's and easy. I don't care. I don't care. And, and, and sorry, Derek. I don't care if it's Derek Randall's. I don't care if it's Justin Smia. I don't care if it's Bart Gattino. What have they brought you? Zero. Nobody has brought anything. Stop giving the money. They can do it on their own. If they find something, then you can invest in it. Well, I mean, okay, let's see. You're giving money to purchase all these cameras, okay, and, and blanket an entire forested area. You have the forested area purchased for you to use. Like, you have every tool at your disposal. Why are you setting up the cameras in that location? Uh, because I think it might be a good spot. I think Bigfoot might want to live there. Really? Yeah, I mean, That's what you're basing it off of. Well, some some. How many sightings have you had there? How many sightings have you had, period? Well, sometimes they're based off of areas that have had past Bigfoot sightings, but we still <laughs> but in don't the same know. Sense, they say Bigfoot sighting reports are irrelevant. Right. Right. And and 90% of these people won't share anything. You know, they might... I like... You know, I know that some of us have issues with some people in this one project, but the Bluff Creek project i think has the right idea they're sharing what they find even though there's no bigfoot fucking evidence there but they found at least two endangered creatures there you know species there so that's you know that's something at least we're getting something out of that but like the olympic project we we haven't what do we get some pictures of some white-tailed deer and shit but that's about it i mean we're not getting anything of value out of that one yeah but if you set up cameras in the an area that has wildlife activity, you're going to get pictures of wildlife. Right. The fact that they're setting up at Bluff Creek because Patty was filmed there 50 fucking years ago seems like a waste of time to me. Well, it could be. That doesn't make it a hotbed of activity. Not now. I mean, how many sightings do we get there now? But what it, it is at least providing some scientific evidence that some of these endangered species live in that area. So that that's cool. Is it good for Bigfoot research? Yeah, 
Not really, because there's no Bigfoot evidence on the cameras. Right. Uh, none. Zero. And and nobody really has any good Bigfoot evidence. So what do we do about that? We sit around Hire and from- watch fucking videos that people hoax. Right. <laughs> even the best, even the, in the guys who I think might be trying to do it right, still don't really go out in the field and do what they should do. 90% of the time, and we've talked about it on the show before, it's just a fucking camping trip, and they sit around the fire and, you know, play the guitar and shit. That's about it. I mean, you're not they're not going out there for weeks at a time or months or years. They're going out there for a fucking weekend. You're because never they can't afford anything. to. Well, I, I get that. I understand that. But even the ones that are getting paid to do it, you know. But those are the wrong ones. <laughs> that that's that's the conundrum how do you get the funding and the support in the right hands whenever those people aren't going after the limelight they're not doing anything to get attention like they don't live on the west coast mm-hmm. sorry but that's the way it is there's bigfooters outside of the pacific northwest that are doing a hell of a lot more than anybody out there now, do I think some of those areas that some of these projects are, are based in, like, you know, do they have potential to be Bigfoot areas? Absolutely. But we still don't have anything, you know, zero. So we're doing it wrong. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We all fucking suck at this. Well, we're, we're following the footsteps of those that have come before us who didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Right, and how can you know what you're doing? There is no, there's no playbook on how to find a Bigfoot. Get yourself a Bigfoot field guide, Steve. <laughs> none of that bullshit matters. None of the books, none of the videos, none of the anything. None of it matters because nobody knows really what's going on. There's nobody. Oh, not I, a I, single. Person. I beg to differ. I do. There's a gentleman who, who does a certain podcast. That I tell you what, he knows. He knows everything. Well, I don't care who says what they know. And I don't even care if they're my best friend in the world. You're lying. Or you're lying to yourself, maybe. Because nobody knows anything. Zero. but But by that logic, it goes back to what Matt said earlier that Matthew Johnson could very well be telling the truth. I I think he... <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hate to play devil's advocate, but it goes back to that. Well, he. I think he twists the truth. I think everything that he says has some sort of grain of truth to it, but I don't think... Now, obviously, I don't believe there's a fucking portal in Soha. There, why would interdimensional fucking Bigfoots come through a portal to eat peanut butter in southern Oregon? They can go anywhere in the fucking world. Can you imagine the and commercial for that on the other side? C- come to Soha. <laughs> Soha. It's Have... got the best peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> and Cheetos. So I was talking to one of uh, Johnson's supporters. Share some food with some raccoons and squirrels in the forest. And a, a so one supporter, one one of his supporters named Carol, and I can't remember, David Davison or something like that. Nice lady, but she's so fucking up Johnson's ass that she just can't see. And this is my opinion of her. She can't see, you know, this is all just, as she's been to Soha, by the way. She told me that there are absolutely no raccoon. There's no, you know, small wildlife that could be any, anything that could be taking this. And then she tried to tell me that raccoon can't open jars and they can't, they don't take eggs. And I showed her video proof that, yeah, yeah, they can. And she still fucking denied it. <laughs> she st- no, well, that jar's too small. <laughs> the fucking sealed jar and the raccoon opened it. I mean, what more proof do you need that this stuff actually can happen? Raccoons, skunks do it, too. I've I mean, watched raccoons get into a closed ice chest and take food out of it and run off with it. 
and then, carrying it upright the whole time. Right. And and, I, I've had raccoons open my tent, unzip it, and come inside the tent with me. Right, because they are very smart like animals. Like Sly and, Cooper? Uh, yeah, like Sly Cooper. When I was looking into raccoon behavior, um, they retain knowledge up to two years. So it's they're not stupid animals. They're very intelligent, in fact. So if they learn to open a jar once, they will retain that for two years. And so if you leave food out for a raccoon every two weeks, well, that raccoon's going to remember how to open that jar two weeks from now, you know. And then uh, they will actually pick up an egg with their two hands and walk on their back feet and take it somewhere else to eat it if they feel. I mean, and the you gifting thing is really nervous on day like 729. <laughs> like, oh, shit. At midnight, I'm going to fucking forget everything. Day 729. What, what if they, like, still, what if they, they do still it again, though? Bigfoot. Does it double? Day 633. Sure. We've got them convinced that there's a portal. <laughs> <laughs> I could just imagine the raccoon going back to the raccoon, you know, what are they, where do they live? Nests, hives? I don't know. Hives? Did you just <laughs> fucking say hives? hives? <laughs> yes. The, <laughs> they have a hive mentality, Steve. There's the queen raccoon that sends out all the worker raccoons to bring their peanut butter. I could just imagine, you know, if raccoons spoke English. What they would say... Do you think they would have a British accent? They might, actually. <laughs> and I, I, I see them as Irish. I don't know why. But anyway... <laughs> what, are, what are they saying to each other? That motherfucker believes we're fucking Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, Phil posted uh, a video of a snake. Snakes will take eggs. But I was talking to this guy who goes by the name of Patrick Epistemon, no, that's not his real name. His real name is Patrick Peacock. God is my witness. <laughs> and he's some big, he claims to be some big, uh, he works for the government, uh, military, and some sort of secretive, who knows, bullshit that he claims. But he told me that you can't put the cameras on, uh, on the uh, gifting bulls because then all activity ceases. <laughs> exactly, because then it would capture images of Dr. Johnson walking out there and throwing the egg through the fucking woods. <laughs> then I told him, I replied with, you know, Chris, I think you'd be proud of me. My reply was, horse shit. <laughs> he never replied to that for some reason. Yeah. I mean, because it's bullshit. You know, you can't you can't to have state, it one way. I need to state to... that there are no small animals in a fucking f it's a fucking forest out there. You can hear in the backgrounds of his videos. I mean, there's at least insects there. There's crickets and all sorts of shit in the last video. In the one video, you can hear birds and crows will pick up chicken eggs and take them off. I mean, there's a thousand videos on YouTube of crows doing exactly that. I posted one where the crow walked right up into the chicken coop, grabbed an egg, and flew off with it, you know. So you can't tell me there isn't small animals in Soha. And I, I've heard people say there's not, not even any birds. You can hear the fucking birds on his videos. So they're there, you know. And the one guy even says, hey, I hear a crow. I mean. No, Soha's like, Soha like the dome. <laughs> this, this Patrick guy, he tells me that... Uh, uh, Dr. Johnson put the eggs out to show that the eggs wouldn't be taken. And so the last time they went up there, 11 eggs were missing. <laughs> they were showing, they were trying to prove that Bigfoot is picky on what he eats. So he likes, you know, raspberry jam, but he doesn't like blueberry jam. Uh, he likes uh, peanut butter, but he doesn't like eggs. He'll only take one bite out of the Cheeto. Only one that. man dares give me the raspberry. <laughs> so Patrick tried to tell me that this was to prove that Bigfoot is a picky eater. Well, how does that prove it if all the eggs were missing? You know? I, I just don't get these people's mentality, I guess. There's no mentality to get. How many, times have I, how many times have I fucking said it? If you want to fucking, if you want a slice of insanity in America and the world, look at this shit. Yeah. It's totally in fucking sane. 
you know? Take a good, long fucking look. Cause it, it, it's, 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 it's exactly what it is. <clears throat> it's a bunch of people that it, 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 it becomes backstabbing. There's, it, it clicks form, and this one's fighting this one, and this one believes this thing, and this one believes this thing, and this one believes this thing. Everybody's got their own fucking belief structure. It's, it's almost like a religion, and you'd swear... Like, if this wasn't just, you know, uh, groups spanning across the internet and the world, that there would be, like, wars that would actually happen where blood would be shed. People have potentially already had that sort of thing. I mean, Struford's bookstore was shot at, and it's pretty good bet that it yeah, could have been Yeah, but he can irritate something. a motherfucker. Yeah, he can, and you're right. He does. He even irritates me without. I'm even not saying it's right. Does. I like him, but I, I understand. Like I know you don't like the guy, and I know why you don't like the guy. Great. Uh, there's times that I like him, and there's times that I fucking hate him. But it has gone to that extent where people, we have to assume it was a big footer because there was a lot of shit going down at that time. Shot the fucking bookstore. I mean, come on. And he wasn't even in it. No, he wasn't in it at the time, and maybe that was on purpose. But it can go to that extent, and and that's just crazy. That's that's some weird, whacked-out shit. Over a creature that, I mean, Matt, I know you've had your sightings. I haven't, and Chris hasn't. But you've heard one before, haven't you? Uh, I've heard bipedal footsteps. Does that count? Counting for the Thunderbird, so I guess so. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I just heard them walking through the kitchen five minutes ago, so I guess I. That's I guess a. I've had that's a that's you a, have a backyard person too. No, he has a no, kitchen it's person. In the house. <laughs> yes, that's have different. A no, so I don't know. It, it, I think what Doctor Johnson's doing up there in Soha, and I, I've said this many times, is. Very, and it's not because of you know the backbiting and the infighting in the Bigfoot community, but what he's actually doing at Soha is feeding wild animals, and he's taking children there, and that is just fucking insane to me. You know, you're putting all your guests and your children and anybody who may wander into that area when you're not there in danger, because you think there might be a Bigfoot there, and, and you're that leaving little fucking food. dog too. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I'm serious, and Carol told me you can't be genuinely concerned about that. Bullshit, I'm not. One of these days... And no, he's not luring be, bears to his campsite. I mean, there's been a bear in his campsite, and she says to me, well, that was once in nine years. And I said, it only takes one time for a bear to maul somebody. Oh, you're such a big bear. Look at you. You're such a big bear. And that's what you're doing. The first rule of camping is to secure your food away from your campsite so that you don't have this problem. Not put it in gifting bowls right outside the perimeter of your campsite. I mean, that's ridiculous. His and Bigfoot it, friends will protect him, Steve. Bullshit. Horseshit. He's such so, a good bear. And I got Look accused of oh, bringing this his kid This is Mr. Muggles. I got accused of bringing his kid in somebody and it may not be at dr johnson's site but this stuff goes on all over the place people are leaving gift gifting bowls out all over the, because he's teaching them how to do it somebody is going to get hurt eventually somebody's going to get mauled by a bear or bit by a coyote or you know get rabies from a raccoon or something it's going to happen and it i keep waiting every day i open up facebook and read these messages and groups and shit for somebody to say it happened because it will. It's going to go down. It's going to. It's dangerous behavior. This Christmas in any, Southern Oregon. Look on any DNR website or wildlife management website or, you know, state game lands website or whatever. What's the one thing they tell you not to do? The very first rule. Don't feed the animals. Don't talk about and there's reasons club. for that. Well, yeah, same thing. Uh. So, if people think that I'm just Could Marcia bringing make me some that tea? up, 
Uh, coffee, maybe okay. some coffee. Oh, okay. Chocolate. You like chocolate coffee, Chris? I, I do actually. Okay, because that's what she's making. Oh, okay. All right. But anyway. So that's my thoughts on the whole fucking Matthew Johnson thing and why my main concern is not, I could care less if there's a portal in Soha. I could care less if there's Bigfoot in Soha. If they are there, yay. Okay. Stop feeding wild animals. That's it. That's all I'm concerned about. <laughs> Somebody's going to die eventually. My, 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 my take on it um, before we, uh, segue to the rantings of a schizophrenic Brit for the week is this if he has found portals in southern Oregon and there isn't a slew of NASA scientists or somebody there at this point then I don't buy that he's found anything because you cannot find what would be the most amazing discovery I believe of all fucking time and not have some type of involvement from some type of scientific entity or government entity at this point. Well, maybe they're there when Johnson's not there, Chris. Maybe they just let him have his fun and then they come in and, you know, they turn the if fucking, you look at the, they turn the portal back on with the flashlight. If you look at the pictures of so does it depend on which road, batteries you use in the flashlight? Uh, Johnson, would you have you believe that this is way out in the middle of nowhere and nobody ever goes there? And you know? look at the fucking road; it's well traveled. <laughs> right where the portal's supposed to be is over the road, and there's a big old rut in the road and mud puddles and everything. So people do go there. You know, it's not just, it's not out in the middle. And I mean, it might be way off the beaten path, but it's not out where people don't go. So, so maybe NASA is there or CERN or, you know. Who the fuck ever. Whoever. So for this week, gentlemen, I give you, as we all love, uh, the rantings of Sir Richard Allen. So, uh, Chris told me not to do another epic Bigfoot rant and another researcher today. He said I should move on to more headliney current news. Way to throw me under the bus if you fuck That's it up. That's kind of good. It's a systematic <laughs> dressing down of the entire Bigfoot community. While I enjoy it, it was something I Didn't was we just do a Bigfoot debate. rant? Sadly, however, the only current news dominating my news feed this week was fucking bloody stupid Johnson and his open portal video. <laughs> what do you know? By all means, pause this video and go over to his YouTube channel and watch it if you haven't already. This is the one with the blank screen and just the audio. <laughs> what a fucking cunt. However, <laughs> I can use this to springboard onto a topic I can talk about. Bottles! Now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever he mentions these rifts in the time-space continuum, I imagine Bigfoot in a sterile white room shooting a blue hole in the roof and an orange one in the floor, while Johnson's voice <laughs> states over the intercom, move the block, open the door, and then there will be peanut butter sandwiches. Ha! <laughs> you get that reference. We are now friends. Anyway, portals. Paranormal or natural phenomenon? What do they look like? How do they work? Who cares? Let's move on to the paranormal, <laughs> specifically research. This is an area I feel is a waste of time, as every single one of us will at one time find out what happens after death. So why ruin the surprise? However, <laughs> let's talk about the evidence for a moment. Now, there are a few cool pictures on the internet, as well as videos, you know, the smoky face in the corner of the camera, because apparently the camera can pick up things the naked eye can't. Um... <laughs> Uh, what the hell is all that noise? <laughs> videos on the internet uh, because you might accidentally stumble on one of those horrible screamer videos. Always check the comment section. That's my advice, especially if it's like <laughs> ten seconds long. Uh, but chat. what about EVPs? This is electronic voice phenomenon. I rate this form of evidence slightly below Ivan Marks, if I'm honest. Why do ghosts always communicate in the same language as the people on the team recording it? Why is it always whispered and never spoken loudly? I think we all know the answer to that. It's total bollocks. While on the subject of paranormal crap, you paranormal 
crappy evidence, does anyone else watch ghost adventures and want to physically reach through the screen and strangle them? No? It's just me. It's so cheesy and horribly done for fuck's sake. Ghost hunters are less so, for they are kind of trying to look for the paranormal spell, or at least better at pretending than the Ghost Adventures team are. I saw a ghost once. Did you know that? Oh, I think I did. Read my blog. It's in there somewhere. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, look at that, that plug. Story. Look at him. On to another topic. Look at him. possession. Is it real? There are a few documented cases in human history, the most famous one being that Annalise chick that The Exorcist was based on. The audio recordings of that event are on YouTube, or at least they say it's from that event. There's no way of knowing for sure. Actually, The Exorcist it's is not based hell, on Annalise the hell it Michelle. Was. was she really possessed, or was it perhaps an attention-seeking ploy on the girl's part? Massively backfired, if that was the case. I mean, she died and shit. She woke up like the previous <laughs> week and thought, I don't want to get their attention. <laughs> she majorly fucked up and deserves to be mocked. On the other hand, uh, if it was a real de demonic possession type thing, gotta what kind of gotta wonder what kind of dumbass low on the totem pole demon decides a teenage girl is the best way to move forward. Unless it was one of those demons <laughs> from the Japanese hentai, in which case I totally get it and ew. Either way, it's a bit. <laughs> Did he just make a no, reference to hentai? About this, uh, <laughs> yes, he did. Wacky stuff, ah, and he was all ah, fuck sake. As she's getting me. fucked by like tentacle monsters, me, Phil with penises <laughs> on the end. But don't take my word for it. Take well-known Bigfoot celebrity Michael Merchant. Phil Pauling is a genius, an intellectual genius. <laughs> well, thank you, for that, Mike. That really hit me where I live. That wraps it up for the week. Take it with all, all with a pinch of salt. Oh, Johnson's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chris told me not to do a Bigfoot rant, but I'm going to do a Bigfoot rant anyhow. <laughs> I'm going to intermix a Bigfoot rant into my rant on the paranormal. He even put Ivan Marks in there, which is, <laughs> you know, one of the old school Bigfoot hoaxers. So... Oh, God. Take oh, that I with a it. fucking pinch of salt. Sir Richard. Gotta love him. Who doesn't? I do. Uh, Steve, do you have any new? Jesus Christ, the newsroom. It's fucking crazy over there, Steve. It's busy. There's breaking news and shit like that. And breaking so. glasses. And it, 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 That's part of the breaking news. I'll get into that. Uh, oh. Good. That Play the damn intro. But I want to listen to the commotion. <laughs> I, I can't. You know, we were over this before the show about how I lost, you know, whatever. Let's just play the news. But but it's way more uncomfortable with me sitting here not playing the news intro. <laughs> we're just going to actually sit here in silence and uh, listen to the background noise. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I'm not even going to go there. Huh, all right. Just, you know. All right. Play the uh, intro. Okay. Here, here it comes. As promised, breaking news. Dailymail.co.uk. A Japanese company claims to have reached the next level in developing the most genuine looking sex doll which comes complete with realistic feeling, skin, and authentic-looking eyes. Those Japanese... I there's supposed to be a pause there between feeling and skin. <laughs> I... Yeah. Well, I was hoping it meant, you know, she feels realistic, but... Yeah, because that's why I guess for, for a sex doll. <laughs> or it, you got to take a look at this uh, news story. I'm sure Chris will put the link in the, the bottom, but the pictures, man, they're... they're Pretty realistic looking. Uh, Orient Industry says their new range of dolls made from high quality silicon. Japanese are so people want to fuck robots so bad. <laughs> they do. They're so realistic, there is very little to dis distinguish them from a real girlfriend at first glance. Uh, at second glance, though, see. the dolls, which are not inflatable, are sold under the name Dutch Wives. <laughs> Dutch wives, <laughs> Japanese sex doll. It they would, look listen, Matt. They 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 <laughs> took that name in favor of Dutch oven. 
<laughs> which got shot down oh, by I the board. It. Dutch wives is a Japanese term for a sex doll, apparently. Stink and then, finger, love finger. Advertisements in the media boast that anyone who buys one will never want a real girlfriend again. Uh, <laughs> Where do I sign up? Yeah, I, I, I fucking don't. Well, <laughs> um, they sell for just over. Four thousand pounds, which is about sixty-two hundred dollars in U.S. money, uh, each. And early sales uh, indicate they are proving to be a success, a success. And the company behind the dolls are putting. I shouldn't do that, Chris. You've warned me many times. That joke just sucked. Yeah. <sighs> and sit, the company behind the dolls. Sit in it, motherfucker. Just like the fucking <laughs> background noise. <laughs> And the company buying the dolls are putting their success down to their realistic-looking skin and eyes. They have also come with a selection of clothing clothing to prevent the new owner from having to suffer the embarrass embarrassment of visiting a lingerie store. This doesn't feel <laughs> like a vagina at all. Yeah, but look at her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't, they don't mention the vagina, do they? Uh, potential buyers can also customize the dolls, meaning they can choose the bus size, look at the hair color, she and comes with a real of, orgasm look on her face. What the <laughs> fuck does that matter when I'm doing it from behind? <laughs> oh, by the way, latest models of the dolls will include movable joints. <laughs> so buyers can place them in any oh, position. Oh, great. It's wish. like the fucking G.I. Joes I played with when I was a kid. <laughs> now with 32 points of articulation. <laughs> Realistic, but it didn't have movable joints. Can Jean St. Jean fucking... Sculpt one of these fucking things for me. <laughs> Do they come with like accessories, like a plastic pineapple or something? <laughs> I bet you, you know, for an extra thirty-seven pounds, you can probably get a pineapple. What's I don't even know. ABCnews.go.com. Mysterious iridescent end of times cloud phenomenon spotted in Costa Rica. Phenomenon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> phenomenon. An iridescent multi-hued cloud phenomenon was phenomenon. recently spotted in Costa Rican skies, and residents were left awestruck and mystified. The spectacle in the sky was reported this past Tuesday afternoon in numerous cities, including San Jose, uh, Parida, Pavas, Escazu, and Hatilo. See, I did all those, and I think I got them all right. Uh, coincidentally, the sighting occurred on the country's Independence Day. <laughs> I get it. See? There's a end of the world cloud, Independence Day, the movie. See, I got it. <sighs> Many witnesses took... You guys just like to let me sit. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> when I try, I, you know, it's... Uh. Many, <laughs> Many witnesses... Baby in a wet diaper. Many witnesses marinate in that shit. Uh, many witnesses took to social media to post photos and videos of the luminous cloud and, uh, cloud formation, with some even noting that it looked like an end of times scenario. Uh, resident Joey Petit, Pet, Petit, I'm sorry, he wasn't very small, so he wasn't petite at all, uh, told ABC News today that he and his family were at the playground in Escazu for an Independence Day festival when his 11-year-old son, Ariel Joseph Petit, first noticed a strange cloud. He immediately grabbed a camera and started taking video and photos, he said. We were just so amazed. We had no idea what it was and had never seen anything like it. Uh, though users on social media have had various theories on what caused the light formation, including, of course, aliens or UFOs, uh, experts said the stunning view was simply caused by a rare weather phenomena called cloud phenomena. iridescence. <laughs> <laughs> the phenomena. Moisture in the atmosphere. <laughs> It is pretty impressive if you see the video. Uh, the phenomena was produced uh, produced a similar phenomena. sky spectacle in South Carolina last month. It was dubbed a fire rainbow. I like that. I like that uh, term, fire rainbow. Fire. From WSET.com, W-S-E-T, uh, Bedford County, Virginia. He's a legend, most say a myth. Uh, people hunt for him on reality television shows, but a Bedford County woman says her story is no joke. She called the sheriff's office about Bigfoot. Uh, ABC and at 13. Steve's house right now, it sounds like the beginning of a Bon Jovi song. <laughs> 
ABC 13 uh, spoke to the woman by phone Thursday. She provided details on the condition of anonymity. She didn't want to be known, apparently. The woman said she recently moved to the area and does not want to get a reputation with her new neighbors. <laughs> no shit. I know this is going to sound crazy, said the woman. How come all, every time you get into a conversation with somebody about Bigfoot, I do it myself. I know this is going to sound crazy, but <laughs> every time. I believe in a big, hairy ape man. And then I you got to like drool a little when you say it. Yeah, that's what I, I know. This is going to sound crazy, said the woman in a call to Bedford's dispatch on September 9th. The woman told the dispatchers she was driving up Route 43 toward the peaks of Otter around 1140 p.m. on September 9th. Uh, she said her headlights hit something strange past Turkey Mountain Road just uh, before the bridge. This is part of her conversation with a dispatcher on September 11th. Wait a second. This happened September 9th. And she didn't call the dispatcher till the 11th. Right. She waited two days, Steve. <laughs> she waited correct. two days. My dog did not wait two days. No. <clears throat> she got scolded and went to bed. Caller says, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I went back and checked. The woman and got were scolded prints. and went to bed? No, the, the, my dog did. Oh, oh. The caller said... Uh, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I went back and checked, and there were prints, a Bigfoot with a baby. The dispatcher says, there were what? <laughs> the caller says, it's a Bigfoot with a baby. Uh, after assuring the dispatcher she hadn't been drinking, the woman offered no explanation why she'd waited two days to call. She says she went back in the daylight. Uh, Goddamn said, Bigfoot I stole my baby. The caller said, I did see some footprints, and the stride was longer than anything I could make. The woman says the creature's footprint was bigger than her two feet together, end to end. She wears a size 8 shoe. She says the creature was holding its baby the way a human would. The caller said, the baby was By looking... The throat. <laughs> Michael Jackson style. Uh, the baby was looking right at me. Uh, By the, the woman scruff of its neck to... with its teeth. Hey, you know what? She confirms uh, Melba, or not Melba Ketchum, who, the, the Chewbacca thing. She says the baby looked just like Chewbacca from Star Wars. So maybe that is confirmation that that picture is real. Or maybe it was a cosplayer dressed like <laughs> Chewbacca. The, baby. the caller said, have you ever gotten reports like this? The dispatcher says, I've never had a call like this in my life. <laughs> the dispatcher told the woman he's worked in dispatch 10 years. A deputy checked out the area and didn't see anything. The woman said she knows they were not bears. We've got to call into the state biologist to see if he can explain what she may have seen. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to guess it wasn't a Bigfoot with a baby. <laughs> oh, Just, come that's on. my guess. Listen, we've all seen the picture of a Bigfoot with a baby, Steve, but oh. Hmm. That's but right. that is the news, gentlemen, such as it is. Ah, the news. hoo That was an epic show. This has been The Fortean Slip, episode 89. According to Steve, at uh, Alcorn Central, epic show. Epic. If any, success. If anybody would like to check out um, Steve's blog, he won't be doing anything to <laughs> um, let you know what's been going on and and why we we get to hear a Chinese kitchen during the show or what you would hear in an American Chinese restaurant as you were sitting there. It's part of the entertainment, Chris. It's just the way it is. If you say so. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, like. Check out DreadFun at DreadFun.com. And check out BigfootCrossroads.com. See ya! <laughs>